and welcome to this week's episode of FIA Pure Motorsport. The FIA Karting European Championship has a great start into the new season. The second edition of the Rally Andalusia promises amazing rally sport and a great field of drivers. They're young and confident. We're introducing you to the future stars of racing. And much, much more from the FIA world of motorsport. Amazing drivers, tough weather conditions, and an epic location. What better way to start the FIA Karting European Championships than at Karting Hjenk, the home of champions. In the OK Junior category, Ian Eichmann starts the final from pole position on home soil with reigning world champion Freddie Slater alongside him, but on the outside line, a big disadvantage. As the field goes into turn one, Akshay Bora and Dion Govda, the two young men from Singapore, can gain a decent position and pursue the leader Eichmanns and slot in ahead of Slater. Up front, Eichmanns is already defending, eagerly hoping to capitalize on his early weekend form, having won four times in five heats leading up to the final. But with this being his first major taste of racing at this level, even local knowledge isn't enough to keep the freight train behind him. Bora, Govda and Slater are all able to squeeze through at the first corner, leaving Eichmanns to slip from first to fourth. So now it was Singapore 1-2 with Slater in third position. The new leader starts to increase his pace in the hopes of getting away, but Slater isn't prepared to wait around for too long and makes a bold overtake into turn nine on teammate Govda. Now he's back into second position again. Eichmanns soon edges himself back into contention with a solid move in the final hairpin back into third. Slater has been hunting down Bora, and when the moment presented itself to the young British driver in turn one, the world champion didn't need to be asked twice. Freddie Slater is now in front. The reigning world champion is totally in command. Having been one of the fastest drivers from qualifying, then with three wins and two third places, he has more than justified his position at the front of the field in Hjenk. For the Ricky Flynn Motorsport team, it couldn't have ended better for their young men. Akshay Bora stays focused under pressure from Ian Eichmanns, who takes a very popular podium in his homeland. Slater with the first win of the new season, Akshay Bora in second place, local hero Ian Eichmanns in third. In the OK category final, Arvid Lindblad and Rafael Kamara share the front row. When the lights go out, Juho Valtanen steps up the attack and slots in behind Lindblad. As the field makes its way to the far side of the circuit, Andrei Zhivnov steps up his own attack and makes his move on Kamara to move into third. Vaitenen with a feisty move on Lindblad and the flying Finn is back in front. But now that Kamara has made the move to third, he appears to gain speed and confidence in the cart and is now in pursuit of Lindblad. It won't take long, and at the end of the lap, Kamara is through, making a clean break on the inside line. Lindblad needs to bounce back fast. Reclaiming the place would give him the upper hand psychologically, but Kamara clearly knows that and doesn't let him have a chance to pass him on turn one. The next task is clear. Catch Valtanen before Lindblad can pass again. On the motorway straight, Kamara makes a simple maneuver and claims the lead of the race, backing Vatanen into the path of Lindblad. Kamara then starts to push in order to increase the lead, and it isn't long before Lindblad makes his own way past Vatanen. However, much to his dismay, Kamara has already driven well off into the distance. Kamara displays wisdom and character beyond his years and takes an incredibly important victory, not just because it's the first of the season to start the ball rolling, but also because his home nation is due to host the World Championships in October. Arvid Lindblad finishes in second place and Juho Valtanen in third. A great win for the young Brazilian after a successful weekend in Hjeng.
Safety is the most important issue in motorsports, especially in karting, where the youngest drivers live their sport with a lot of passion and commitment. Many drivers have already voluntarily used a rib protector in recent years. Since this season, it's mandatory. It's new mandatory for international races, CAK international races this year. It's an evolution of the already used rib protector, but with additional protection uh, on, on the front side. So the new one is the, um, the homologated one with the FIA. It's designed really because the FIA wanted to have a chest plate um, for extra support across the chest. Always bringing in new technology to make it safer is uh, very ideal. There are four different manufacturers producing the new karting body protector with each manufacturer's product homologated by the FIA to ensure their effectiveness. Body protectors have to have a certain stiffness. The composite has to be strong, but also they have to be comfortable to wear for the drivers. They are important for safety and the protector is really easy to put on with a new chest plate either on the outside or inside. So the driver puts their arms through the, uh, the elastic straps and then with the chest plate, you put it on the inside of the rib protector, like our competitors, and you tighten it up. And then to adjust the straps, you pull it out, and then you can adjust it like that. And then to adjust the back panel, go for the connectors, which is the FIA rule, which the parts cannot be separated. And then with this, you can, you can find the driver's chest shape, and then you obviously have to then put the next piece on and it's nice and secured and will not come undone. When we get the correct size, you know, it's quite comfortable. You don't really feel it when you're on track. You're just thinking about the racing and yeah, it's very nice. The karting body protector not only helps in the unlikely event of an accident, but also in other aspects of the race. You know, when we're, we're driving, there's high G-forces and we're pulled to either side of the seat, also over big curves, which we have to hit at some tracks. Um, it just sort of helps absorb some of, the, uh, some of the energy and some of the impact um, to take uh, less imp um, relieve some of the stress on our ribs and our body. And with the new front plate, the chest is also protected. Everything in place for a spectacular and safe season. Now we travel to the beautiful south of Spain, where the second edition of the Rally Andalucía takes place. Like last year, the bivouac is set up in the magnificent place of Hacienda El Rosalejo. The drivers have 1,086 kilometers of special stages over the hills and plains of Andalucía in front of them. They have to master an 8-kilometer prologue and four stages between 200 and 300 kilometers per day. Last year's champion Nasser Al Altiya in his Toyota Hilux Overdrive is again the top favorite, but he faces serious rivals led by Yazid Al Raji. Last year uh, we do uh, well, we win uh, some stage, I think we win three stage, but I think this year we try to win more and win the rally. The rally starts with a short prologue. Although counting towards the overall result, the prologue's principal purpose is to decide the start order for the first stage. Nasser al Atiyah shows his good form from the start, maneuvering his Toyota through a narrow stage. Just three seconds behind him is Vaidota Sala in his John Cooper Works Rally Mini, followed by Carlos Sainz. A good warm-up for the first stage on the next day. Stage one is a stage with three timed sections. The total length is 219 kilometers, a little shorter than the other stages with medium fast tracks. The route passes through the wheat fields of southern Spain, and it's the Lithuanian Vaidota Zala with his Portuguese co-pilot Paulo Fiuza who surprises everybody. The 33-year-old finishes the first stage in second place just 1 minute 25 seconds behind Nasser al Ataya.
The three-time Rally Dakar champion won the prologue so he could choose his starting position for the first stage. He decided to start in third place behind al Raji and his eternal rival Carlos Sainz, the perfect tactic. While Sainz is losing time behind a slow al Raji, al Atia and his co-pilot Mathieu Bommel have the times of the biggest rivals in mind and no slower opponent in front of them. A very successful stage for the favorite team. I'm really quite happy, you know, to win all the stage and we have uh, uh, leading now and uh, yeah, it's look like uh, in good way and uh, we, we try to do every day like this. After stage one, Nasser al Atiyah leads the rally Andalusia by 1 minute 25 seconds just ahead of Aidota Stzala. Carlos Sainz is sitting in third place. Stage two is the longest stage of the Rally Andalusia with a total of 451 kilometers. This is the special stage that takes the competitors the furthest from the bivouac, all the way to the province of Cordoba. The competitors start the first special in the hills. It's more technical, especially at the start. The second section is faster, sometimes very fast. The leader, Nasser al Atiyah makes one mistake and loses between 50 seconds and one minute and then tries to make up the time afterwards. Although he is very fast, he finishes third on the second stage. Yazid al Raji has his best stage so far. Despite a slow puncture on the second special, he finishes second. But no one can beat Carlos Sainz on this day. In his first rally in the mini John Cooper Works rally, the Spanish legend finally manages his 4x4 and wins his first rally raid stage in a 4x4 since 2011. With this win, he's now in second place, just a minute 26 behind Al Atia. Vaidota Sala is in third, but almost five minutes back. Stage three is the fastest special of the rally, over 300 kilometers in one go, cut only by refueling. It's very quick with a fast pace. Carlos Sainz tries everything to cut into the lead of Al Atia and pushes his Mini Cooper to the limit, but the Qatari doesn't give him a chance. From the start, he is in full control of the stage and is extending his lead in the overall standings. I was really uh, pushing, you know, you know, all the way without any risk, you know, and uh, yeah, we uh, we win uh, the stage and uh, with a good time, you know, uh, between me and C uh, Carlos, you know. Overall, Nasser Al Atia leads four minutes forty-three seconds ahead of Science, with Al Raji in third, almost ten minutes back. The last stage of the Rally Andalusia, 296 kilometers with many climbs and descents in the hills. In focus, the duel between Sainz in second place and Al Atia in first place. The Spanish driver is catching up second by second, reducing the lead to just 2 minutes 43 seconds. But the experienced Al Atia doesn't get nervous. He stays in control and in the lead. Even the two-minute penalty he receives for unintentionally cutting the course doesn't change the end result. With an advantage of 43 seconds, Nasser al Atia and Mathieu Bommel defend their title from last year. This was a fantastic weekend, you know, I am quite happy to win again and defend uh, our title from last year and we show we are really a uh, fast uh, crew in this uh, rally. Yeah, I am quite happy. Overall, Nasser al Atiyah wins with 43 seconds ahead of Carlos Sainz, with al Raji in third. An emotional end to a great rally weekend in beautiful Andalusia. The first round of the FIA European Hill Climb Championship took place in Bordicas, 150 kilometers northeast of Porto in Portugal. Forced into reduced programs for months, the hill climb specialists were keen to get back behind the wheel, and they didn't disappoint on the Bodicas course. The race was new for most of the drivers since it was the first time Bodicas was part of the European Championship. It offers a superb 5km course with a high level of safety. In Category 1, the closed cars, Italian driver Antonio Migliolo in his Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 9 finished third overall. The race for victory was a spectacular one. 
Spanish driver Jose Lopez Fambona in the Lamborghini Huracan had the best time in the first race and good times in races two and three. But Swiss Ronnie Bracci managed to maneuver his Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 7 perfectly through the technically difficult course. In the end, he won the first round of the season by just three tenths of a second. Even closer was the race for first place in category two, the competition cars. The first round was dominated by Italian drivers, Diego De Gasperi finishing third. Christian Merli had an epic battle with Simone Fagiole for the win. Merli was 1.785 seconds faster on day one and showed in his Osella FA30 a good performance in the final two races. But Fagioli took the gamble of fitting his Norma M20 FC Zytec with four new ultra soft tires for the final climb, a gamble that paid off. He set a new course record with a time of just 1 minute 57.455 seconds for the 5,030 meter long racetrack and beat his fellow Italian driver by the smallest of margin, just 32 thousandths of a second. After 21 months of a COVID-19 based break, a great start into the new season. The 2021 Sharkia Baja took place in the eastern province of Saudi Arabia near Kobar. It's the first time the Baja was included in the FIA World Cup schedule. Yasir Siaidan won the start to finish victory by a margin of 13 minutes 38 seconds. Siaidan and Russian co-driver Alexei Kuzmich were never troubled in their mini John Cooper Works rally. It was the Saudis first ever FIA event victory. Czech veteran Miroslav Zepletal and his co-pilot Marek Sikora secured second place in their Ford F-150 Evo. Show and emotions during the first round of the eighth season of the Italian F4 Championship. On the French track of Paul Ricard, the Russian Kirill Small from Prima Power Team won race one after having led it from the beginning to the end. But then Tim Tramnitz from US Racing took over. After his second place in the first race, the 16-year-old German driver dominated and won race two and three. He now leads the overall standings with 68 points in front of Kirill Small, who has 40 points. The next round of the F4 Italian Championship will take place in Misano, Italy. They're young and share a big dream to make it to Formula One. For some drivers, it's a dream they don't dream alone because they are from countries that never had success in Formula One. So these young drivers embody the hope of their fellow citizens to finally have a superstar in the big show. Hello, I'm Cem Bolukpesi, Bolukpasha from Turkey. I'm 22 years old and I race for Black Hearts Racing. Cem just completed his first F3 Asian Championship season. He scored points in 13 of 15 races and finished ninth in the overall standings. A great result for the rookie, whose only single-seater experience came from the Formula One eSports series. I think the track is very similar and the similar, I think practicing the track, memorizing the track, the opt finding the optimum racing line is perfect on the simulator. It's actually crazy how close it is to real life. At some point you feel like you're wearing a VR like a headset or something. It's that close. Cem is not only a famous sim driver, but also one of the few Turkish race drivers in the history of racing. So he feels a lot of support. For Turkey, it's something new being a Turkish like single-seater driver um, so racing here getting their support is obviously very special many Turkish eyes will therefore be on the 22 year old in the future as well imagine then how many eyes are turned on to the careers of Chinese driver Guan Yuzhu and Indian driver Jehan Daruvala they are both coming from two of the most populous countries in the world and showed in this year's F3 Asian Championship that they are ready for the higher tasks the 22-year-old Daruvala won three races and had eight appearances on the podium. He finished the season third overall, and it's no wonder that the Red Bull Junior driver hopes to make it to an F1 cockpit sometime soon.
Guan Yu Zhu is also just 22 years old, and he is arguably the Chinese driver who is the closest to Formula One. He took a big step in the right direction by winning the F3 Asian Championship, but he knows the last step towards fulfilling one's dream is always the most difficult. Round 2 of the 2021 FIA European Historic Rally Championship takes place in the Czech Republic with the 29th edition of the historic Vltava Rally. The rally is based in the bohemian city of Klatovy and has attracted a truly international field with a great selection of historic cars to compete for class honors on the Czech roads. Reigning Category 3 champion Karl Wagner and co-pilot Gerda Zoina are back with their first outing in the 2021 season in their yellow Porsche 911 SC. The Austrians post the fastest time on the first three stages of the day and finish day one on top of the leaderboard. But they are being chased by Andrea Zippo Zivian and co-driver Dennis Piceno in their Audi Quattro. The Italian driver wins stages 4 and 5. The Audi Quattro finishes day 1 second overall behind the Porsche. Both cars belong to Category 3, which are cars manufactured between 1976 and 1981. Swedish driver Anders Jonsson in his Porsche 911 Carrera RSR 3.0 is pushing hard, but finishes day one third overall, already 54 seconds behind first place, but 22 seconds ahead of the Ford Sierra Cosworth of Daniel Alonso and Candido Carrera, which was the fastest Category 4 competitor. Two Czech drivers in their Opel Cadet GTE 16S have a great performance on day one. Miroslav Janota in the number 10 Opel and Wojtek Staff in the number 12 Opel conclude the first day with a top 10 finish. A great rally day for the two locals. Karl Wagner finishes the first day with 17 seconds of a lead at the head of the overall leaderboard. Zippo is in second place and Anders Jonsson in third. On day two, spring has returned with warm temperatures. Perfect conditions for the drivers to enjoy the great stages in one of the most beautiful parts of the Czech Republic. Antonio Parisi and Giuseppe D'Angelo in their red Porsche 911 S 2.0 score their second Category 1 victory for cars constructed 1969 or earlier. Category 4 cars with the year of construction between 1982 and 1990 is won by Daniel Alonso in his Ford Sierra RS Cosworth 4x4. The number 9 Porsche of Anders Jonsson is hampered by slight gearbox problems that allows their opponents to close the gap. At the end of the day, the number 12 Opel of Wojtek Steiff is just two seconds behind, but the win in Category 2 belongs to the Porsche. The battle for the overall lead is just as tight. Audi Quattro driver Zippo chooses the wrong tires in the early stages. That allows Karl Wagner in his yellow Porsche to extend his lead slightly on the first few stages. Before the start of the final 22 kilometer long stage, Zippo is just 0.7 seconds behind Karl Wagner. <laughs> The Audi Quattro completes the stage in 12 minutes, 37.4 seconds, and wins the final stage 5.2 seconds ahead of the Porsche 911 to claim victory by just 4.5 seconds. Great rally sport. Yes, I'm really, really happy because it uh, was uh, in a crazy race because for the weather, we, we make a mistake for the, ch for the choice of the tire, but uh, after the, the last three stages, we, we push very, very on the limits, and it's, it's a fantastic victory. The overall victory goes to Zippo, Karl Wagner finishes second, and Anders Jonsson in third.
Well, that's it for today. In the next episode of FIA Pure Motorsport, we'll bring you Formula Regional action from Paul Ricard. We'll visit the second round of the FIA European Karting Championship in France. And tires guru Keys Van de Grint reveals the secrets of good tires. Till next time, take care, everybody. Ciao.